Hello. So from today's video, we're going to be answering some parent questions. So following on, on from um, a video that we Up Level Academy put up regarding how to encourage your child to expand on their answers, many parents found it really useful and really insightful. Um, but it led to more questions, which is great. Um, it shows that this is a topic and an issue that many parents are facing with their children. So from today's video, we're going to look at how to encourage your child to expand on their answers and use key vocabulary. And by key vocabulary, we mean advanced vocabulary, more sophisticated and precise. Now, um, if you haven't yet watched that previous video, you can go ahead and watch it. Um, otherwise, let's get started. And to do this, we're going to first reverse engineer our learning objectives. It's always important to look at what we're going to gain and look at the end goal. Um, by doing so, it helps us to um, understand the steps involved. So from this video, you will gain insights into why your child might not expand on their answers, so why your child might not expand on their answers, why your child might not use advanced vocabulary. Now, the reason why I've put might not is because we at Up Level Academy know that while there are common obstacles that children face, they are all unique. Learners are all unique. And so without um, diving into a strategy session with your child, it can be hard for us to pinpoint exactly what their obstacle is. But generally speaking, um, we're going to look at some of the, the most common obstacles, and I'm sure you will find that relatable. We will also look at strategies to support your child in expanding their answers and using advanced vocabulary. So why doesn't your child expand on their answers? Well, the first thing that you could do is ask them, ask your child why they don't expand on their answers. But I really would like to say it should come from a place of calm, a neutral place. The reason being is nobody likes to be made wrong. And what you don't wanna do is make your child wrong. You don't wanna scold them. You don't wanna shame them. So you could do this by looking at some of the answers and then looking at the marks um, available and the mark scheme, and then just ask your child gently, oh, this is a, you know, a great answer, but how could you go into to more depth? Um, do you find it difficult? Or you don't really wanna put words in their mouth. You wanna say, oh, is it difficult? Because they might try to take that on. But say, um, if you look at the number of marks, do you think you've written enough? What could you do to make it you know, more detailed? and see what they come up with. And then ask them, how does it make you feel when I ask you to expand on your answer? Um, because that gives your child the freedom to express what's going on for them. But typically speaking, children don't expand on their answers because they're not sure how to. Um, it feels like they've answered the question already. Um, and this is a big frustration for many children because what happens is um, they feel like they've answered the question and logically, they have, but it's not in enough depth. It's not um, fully explaining it. They've not answered the question fully. And so that can be really frustrating because they feel, well, actually I've answered it. Why do I need to do any of the you know, other stuff? Why do I need to justify? Why do I need to do that? Um, and it can be quite um, frustrating and disheartening for your child, especially because in exam conditions, you know, they need to be haste and speed. And so logically, it makes sense just to answer it briefly and succinctly, right? Um, and they do not know what is expected of them. They don't know what they're meant to be doing. They don't know really what's being asked of them. And so if you don't have an end goal, it can be really challenging to meet that. So it's important that we make this explicit. So how you can do this. So helping your child expand on the answers by going through the mark schemes, assessment objectives, what the examiners want actually going through it explicitly so that your child understands, well, actually, this is what you're being marked on. This is what you're being assessed on. And this is why you need to go into greater depth. Encourage, encourage your child to look at the number of marks available. Let them compare so that they can see, actually, if it's worth eight marks, six marks, four marks, what's expected. And create answers that deliberately lack detail and read them out and see whether your child can guess the question. So for example, don't tell your child the question, just have an answer that perhaps you've written that is deliberately lacking in detail and ask them to work out the question. And they won't be able to do it, they'll find it quite challenging. Then have a more detailed answer and read that out and then see whether they can guess the question. 
and they should be able to do that or very close. And by doing so, this helps bridge the gap for your child between what they're writing and answering the question and discuss topics. Um, as stated in the previous video, um, you know, discuss topics with your child, get them to naturally justify themselves. So for example, um, start off with things that are tangible. And this is for children, whether they be eight all the way up to, you know, 16 um, plus, um, you know, discuss topics with them, start it off with tangible things, things that they can experience physically in their everyday lives. So for example, whilst having breakfast, if you have cereal, um, maybe if, if you've got two cereal boxes, um, encourage them to look at them and ask, which one do you think is um, most appealing and why? Um, you could go against what your child says and expand and explain your answers, your reasoning, and that will encourage your child to do the same. And then you want to build up and then look at um, ideas and concepts. Does that make sense? So let me give you an example. So first of all, if you started off with looking at cereal boxes, maybe you've got a um, cornflakes and, and Cheerios and on the cornflakes it's got some golden colors you can ask them well, what does that how does it make you feel what does it make you think of and why and then with the Cheerio box um, again it could be quite plain maybe it's um, just a, a white background ask them well you know how does that make you feel um, why is the other one more effective which one is most effective and why and then as I said with concepts and ideas so um, you could look at well actually why do you think homework is fair or unfair um, however, having said that, uh, maybe don't start off with such a loaded topic if your child is a reluctant homework doer, um, but you get the idea, right? Um, and by doing that and starting off with the tangible, it helps them to see and put into practice um, more easily um, the skills involved in expanding on their answers so that they're then able to transfer it to, to concepts and ideas. So let's have a look at an example. So what impression does the reader get of Dimitrich? And this is where four marks. So let's have a look at this extract here. So Ivan Dimitrich had no faith in lottery luck and would not, as a rule, have consented to look at the lists of winning numbers. But now, as he had nothing else to do, and as the newspaper was before his eyes, he passed his finger downwards along the column of numbers. And immediately, as though in mockery of his skepticism, no further than the second line from the top, his eye was caught by the figure of, 9499 or 9499. Unable to believe his eyes, he hurriedly dropped the paper on his knees without looking to see the number of the ticket. And just as though he had drank a glass of cold water, he felt an agreeable chill in the pit of the stomach, tingling and terrible and sweet. So, what impression does the reader get of Dimitrich? Well, your child might initially write, he doesn't like the lottery. So, again, say, okay. Great answer, but who is he? Why do you think he does not like the lottery? They might then come back with, Dimitrich doesn't like the lottery as the writer states he had no faith in lottery luck. Excellent, that's a great point. Good quote, it does support that. But does it really answer the question? The question asks, what impression do you get of Dimitrich? Dimitrich is a character, right? So how would you describe this character? What does this quote tell you about him, his personality, his behavior maybe, his mindset, what he thinks, what's important to him, what he values? So can you see by questioning your child's answer, it doesn't make them wrong, but it allows them to start making those connections. And then they can come up with this. The reader might get the impression that Dimitrich does not like the lottery as the writer states he had no faith in lottery luck. The monosyllabic phrase, no faith, emphasizes Dimitrich's dislike of the lottery. The reader could also infer that Demit Rich might be a practical person and not a hopeful one, since winning the lottery takes luck. Okay, so that's a more detailed response, isn't it? Now, of course, you may have noticed the subject terminology there, monosyllabic phrase. So you wanna, again, as stated before, explicitly state what's expected of your child. So you could say at the start, the examiner here is expecting you to be able to break down the quotes and to focus and zoom in on words and phrases and explain using your knowledge of language and structure, using your knowledge of techniques to help expand on it. Does that make sense? So just by walking your child through, um, and it, you can see it can be just be a small excerpt to just practice that skill. So you wanna make it explicit and active that you're practicing that skill on expanding answers and keep it simple first of all, and then build up to six, eight, 12 markers.
And then why doesn't your child use new and advanced vocabulary? Well, ask them again, ask them, well, why don't you? Um, and again, you wanna go come from a neutral place, not from a place of making wrong, scolding or shaming. Oops. Sorry about that. For some reason, I have stopped sharing. I've gone back to the beginning. Let me go back here. Oh, there we are. Apologies for that. Let me go back. There we go. Sorry about that. So you want to ask them, and it could be um, a lack of confidence. They're unsure really what the word means. So they might have written down the dictionary definition, but it doesn't mean that they've really understood what it actually means. Um, they've not been exposed to it enough. Um, remember, vocabulary is language learning. And for your child to acquire it and really master it, they must be exposed to that word in multiple contexts, not just once and that's it. Um, and maybe they don't have any need to. There's no need for them to use it. Um, one of um, my favorite authors, um, George Orwell, stated that don't use a big word when a small word will do or when a little word will do, right? You want to keep it clear. And so maybe if your child feels that they're able to express themselves clearly, then there's no need for it. Okay. So all valid points. So how can we then help your child? So helping your child use new and advanced vocabulary. Use the new words yourself. Okay. Um, if you want your child to use these words, then model it. Use it yourself. Challenge yourself. Put a word of the week up around the house. It could just be one. You could put it up in the fridge or in the bathroom so that you can all see it. Encourage them to look up the word class. So don't just think about what the word means, but actually is it a noun, an adverb or an adjective? Because that can help them know where to place in sentences. Ask them to work out the meaning of words based on context. So rather than just um, giving them a word to look up and learn, actually um, encourage them to work it out based on the context because that will help build greater connections with the word in their mind and create meaningful tasks for them to use it. So rather than just writing a sentence, you might want to ask them to use it to describe something, to review something um, in a letter to a family member or friend. So get them to use it in their homework tasks from school. Okay, so get them to use it in a meaningful way. So for example, if we had the word consumed, you can see that there are different ways in which this word can be used. So the children were so hungry, they consumed their entire lunch in seconds. From the sentence, what does consumed mean? And so again, encourage your child to work it out based on the context of how it's being used. And again, as, as you are, I'm sure, aware, um, English is um, a language whereby um, words can have multiple meanings depending on how they're being used. So at Christmas, many toys are consumed. And then Ben felt heavy. His guilt was consuming him. And so encourage your child to do it step by step. What can you um, guess as the meaning of the word consumed based on the first sentence, then on the second, and then on the third? And then once they've done that, they can then look the word up in a dictionary to see if they're, they're correct. And then what you can do is you can look do a, a Google search of the word um, and, you know, say consumed used in, in literary works um, or pull it up on an article and have a look at that. Um, obviously, you don't want to look at um, anything too advanced. You want to make sure that it's age appropriate. But by doing this, it helps them to see the word in multiple um, contexts, multiple uses, so that they're able to fully understand how to use it. Um, and then encourage them to use that word, as I said, in their own writing, not just in a sentence, but actually in a story or a description or an answer to a question from school. So that way then they are building that muscle as such, um, okay? So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and as I said, it's always great to, to hear from you. Tell us in the comments what your biggest takeaway is. Um, if you've got any questions, pop them below.